We just thank him for his wonders, for his grace, for bringing us tonight, for, get, for guiding and protecting us all through the week. We're just going to thank God. So we've come to, it's a new week. We've come to learn and hear from the word of God. Let's just begin to thank him for privilege, for knowledge, for grace, for his good health over our lives, over our home, over our family. Let's begin to thank him. Let's thank him for every opportunity. Let's thank him just because he is a great God. He is the one, the, the, the Alpha and the Omega, the Almighty God. Let's just give him thanks and praise. Let's worship him. Let's honor him. Let's just give him our praises. So, Father, we are here this morning, this evening. We're here to learn from you. We're here to worship you. We're here in your presence. Father, we're going to open our minds, our understanding. Just begin to thank him, begin to worship him, begin to give him glory and adoration. Because he is a great God, he is the one that never changes. He is the one that is always there. Let's just have a pray. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for another wonderful opportunity. Father, we are so grateful, we are so honored to be in your presence. We are so honored to have the privilege to, to come study and hear from you again. Father, we God, as we've gathered this evening, we Lord, I pray that you will enrich our knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells us in Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in day in and, and day and night, that thou mayest do to that may us, uh, observe to do the, all that is within it. Father, I pray, God, as we've come this evening to enrich our knowledge, to study, Lord, I pray that you will keep those words in our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you help us learn something today. That the word we we'll hear today will be words that will be uh, directed by you, O oh God. A word that will, give, that will give us knowledge. A no word that will enlighten our path in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commit the, the teacher tonight, O oh Lord. I pray that you will bless the teacher. I pray that the word that they will speak will be words that will be directed by you in the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we cover this service with the blood of Jesus. We cover every activity of today with the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray that you take absolute control over every activity in the mighty name of Jesus. That by the end of this service today, we shall leave here blessed and fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place, O oh God. Take honor, take glory, take, take, take your place, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Living souls in the house, shout hallelujah. If you are happy to be in God's presence, shout hallelujah. Our Lord is good. All the time. I want us to be in the mood of worship this evening. Let's begin to appreciate this Almighty God for bringing us here again. For bringing us here again. Let's begin to appreciate God Almighty. Let's begin to thank His holy name. Let's begin to worship His holy name. Let's begin to appreciate Him. Let's begin to appreciate Him. Hey. For in Jesus' name we worship. We have come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah. Yeah. We have come to draw. We have come to draw hey. You come to draw from the maker. Hey, hey, hey. Draw from you again. Yeah. Yeah. We have come to draw. We have come to draw. 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 
far from you again. Yeah. We have come to draw. to dance to the Lord. You are worthy, worthy of a praise. You are the most high. You are Alleluia. Worthy. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of a praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are the most You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of a praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Worthy of a praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of a praise. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. So you behold, Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah. You are the most. You are worthy. Crown. Lord of, Lord. Who can deny you are crowned? Who can deny you are crowned? 
was born today And who came down on glory Glory be to the Lord in the highest Hallelujah Some people are not dancing Hey, hey glory be to the Lord in the highest Everybody shout hallelujah hey. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, brother shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, shout hallelujah.
ashamed to say God is our God. We're not ashamed to say we believe in God. and We're not ashamed to acknowledge that he is the source of everything good in our life. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. We honor you forever. We adore you. And we return all the glory back to you for your goodness, for your mercy, for protection, for provision, for guidance. For everything, we thank you. For the miracles of sound health. For the miracle of sound mind. For giving us the privilege and opportunity to gather together in peace. Oh, we thank you. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. How much can we pay for Holy Spirit? If not for Holy Spirit, where we have been? You have been your God with us. God with us. God with us, our power, our strength, our joy, we worship you, we honor you, we adore you. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your church. Thank you for upholding us. Thank you for every family represented in OCFI. Thank you for every individual represented in OCFI. Thank you for every job and businesses represented in OCFI. Thank you for increasing us on every side. Thank you because you have spoken concerning us this year that we will have harvest on every side. We will still be keeping old harvest while we need to make room for the new one. We thank you because your thought and plan to work are that of good and not of evil to give us an expected end. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We can never thank God enough because he said... When we're grateful for what he's done in the past, we possibly don't need to ask for a new one because he's just going to do it of his own volition. But nonetheless, we're going to pray and say, Father, we thank you for what you have done thus far in your church because we know that you have not stopped with us. Father, we thank you because you have not stopped with us. You have just started. You said you will do a new thing that we shall behold, the whole eyes will see it. Lord, we thank you for what you have done thus far in your church. And we know that that is not the end. Because that which you started, you always perfect it. Lord, we thank you. Because whatever you do, nothing can be pulled to it. Nothing can be removed from it. We do it so that men may fear you. Lord, this is your handiwork in our midst. 
and we acknowledge you, Lord, your handy works of moving us forward on every side, your handy works of increasing us financially, numerically, or even giving us more strength spiritually, new level of anointing, new level of grace. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the fire of revival that is burning. We worship your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to be praying for the church and the pastors and pastors' family. Of course, it's obvious that they are with us in the spirit. But we're going to be praying that God renew your grace and strength upon their life in the name of Jesus, that they will not fall, they will not falter, but they will finish this race strong. And your grace and anointing upon their life, Lord, multiply it in the name of Jesus. Because we know when we lift up the hand of our Moses, the, we, the Israelite, our Israelite keep winning the battle. Lord, we pray that you strengthen the hand of your servant and his family in the name of Jesus. Pray for Pastor Michael Adewa and his family, Pastor Christina Adewa. We pray for them, O oh Lord, strengthen them, renew your grace upon their life in the name of Jesus. Lord, multiply your anointing upon their life in the name of Jesus. More wisdom, more understanding. Let them go from one level of glory to another in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen their hand so that we the church will keep benefiting from that which you have rubbed upon their lives in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Before we finish, that prayer was just taken from yesterday uh, passage that um, uh, Matthew 6 says, we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the next thing is that every other thing will be added unto us. We pray for the church, we pray for the man of God. So every other thing is added to our life in the name of Jesus. So, <coughs> Verse 30, latter part of verse 30 of verse Matthew 6, say, O ye of little faith. So there, God is doing a lot of things, but we need a corresponding faith to receive. So we say, Lord, increase my faith in the name of Jesus. Even tonight, increase my faith in the name of To be able to see and receive that which you have in plans for me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, receive my faith. Lord, increase my faith in the name of Jesus. Lord, increase my faith. That was what Peter said. Oh, Lord, help thou my unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Because God is doing a lot of things. God is speaking as God. But we are listening as men. And so it may look like, how can it be? How can it be? Mary got it right. Say, be unto me according to your word. So, Lord, increase my faith, Lord. Increase my faith in the name of Jesus. Help me not to doubt your plan and purpose for my life. Irrespective of prevailing situation around me. Irrespective of the irrespective of water, help me to step on that water because you said I should come. Lord, increase my faith in the name of Jesus. Lord, increase my faith. For in Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. The last prayer point is the Prince of Peace. We learned about peace yesterday. Peace is everything. Even if we have every physical thing and peace is not there, it's still nothing. So say, Prince of Peace, rule and reign in my life. Rule and reign in your church in the name of Jesus. Prince of peace, rule and reign in my life. Rule and reign in your church in the midst of chaotic situation of this world. Prince of peace, rule and reign in the name of Jesus. If everything is shaking, let not my heart shake. In the name of Jesus, if everything is shaking, let not my heart shake. You can see Prince of peace was sleeping in the boat even when there was wind bursting all around. And that's why you could say, peace, be still. Lord, rule in my life. Rule and reign in my life. Peace of peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for another time in your presence. And we, you said you wash, you will wash us by water and the word. We have come again to your presence. Lord, we ask that you grant us fresh understanding and illumination in the name of Jesus. Hearing, here and seeing has are yours. We ask, oh Lord, that you open our eyes to see mighty and miracle things from your words in the name of Jesus. Help us to hear that one word for us today in the name of Jesus. And we commit our teachers into your hands. Lord, we ask that you speak through her mightily in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Miracle walker, you are the miracle walker. Oh, come and do your miracle, your miracle today. a minute.
your feet. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for finding us worthy to be called your children. We are not better. We are not righteous. Far from it. The Bible says all our righteousness are like filthy rag before you. But for the mercies that we have received through the blood of Jesus, we have come to say thank you. We have come again unto you, the word himself. Lord, we ask you will speak your word tonight like never before in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, for an encounter like never before with your word. An encounter tonight that will reposition our destiny for greatness. An encounter with your word, oh Lord, that will make us to know that indeed we are serving a truth and a faithful God. Lord, let this be our experience in the name of Jesus. Lord, I hide in you tonight. Lord, standing here on behalf of my Father in the Lord, I ask Daddy that you will speak through me, Lord, and you will, I humble myself before your throne. Daddy, that you will do that which you alone has vowed to do in the, name of, in the name of Jesus. No man will share of your glory. No man will take of your glory. It is your own and we give it to you. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Please let's have a seat. I'm sure we all had a great day. It is well with us in the name of Jesus. I see the strength of the Lord being our portion and our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm sure you are seeing that. Where is daddy and where is mommy? They're on spiritual assignments. And they are here with us in the spirit. Wherever they are, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. And we ask that the presence of Jehovah will perfect all that concerns them in the name of Jesus. By the time you are seeing them next, you see them in another level of authority in the name of Jesus. When they speak and, de and they decree upon our lives and destiny, it will come to pass speedily in the name of Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. God has been so good with us. We started a new chapter last week. That is the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 25. And God has been so good unto us. I want us to go back to that memory verse that we had last week. Who can remind us of the memory verse? If you know, just tell us or else I'll remind, re remind everyone. Our memory verse. Do we have people online, please? Can we see them? Online, good evening. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to see everyone so that we know. God bless you all. You are welcome in Jesus' name. So that when daddy says, did you see anyone online? I say, yes, I saw. Praise the living Jesus. You are welcome. We bless God for your life in the name of Jesus. So let's go to our memory verse, verse 19. Acts 25, verse 19. 
a memory verse for this, let's see, the book of Acts chapter 25. And he says, but at certain question against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Praise the Lord. I'll read it again. But had certain question against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Praise the Lord. Is your Jesus still alive? My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Praise the Lord. Our Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. I remember last week when mommy was teaching us, she went a bit into the culture, superstitions, things people believe in, and things that are not that of importance that people attach their faith into. But because we're on this side and we know that everything works together for the good of those that love God. And because Jesus is alive, there is nothing that is permitted to threaten us. Because we have given our life to him. And he said, in this world you will face so many tribulations. But rejoice. You have done what? He has done what for us? He has overcome. So no matter the superstition, some will tell you don't go out when it's, um, um, when you're pregnant, don't go into the sun. Some will tell you don't put this on your body. So many superstitions. But he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. No matter what might be happening to others. And I remember that he told us, I'm sure during the vigil or Sunday, he said in the camp of the children of Israelites, there was no evil. But on the other side, there was evil. So as long as we are on the side of Christ, nothing, nothing contrary to his plan is permitted around us. And this shall be our experience in the name of Jesus. This memory verse is just telling us that they were questioning Paul, asking him questions about things they believe, things they formed up, and things that was, they just superstitions or reality, things that are, are of not important. Praise the Lord. Things that are of not important where we are going to. Things that men seek to discuss that are of no relevance to where we are going to. So we have to watch it. And as we've had last week, the Lord will continue to help us to build our faith on the right thing and not on the wrong things in the name of Jesus. So because of our time tonight, we'll go. We'll be, we stopped at verse 2, but I want to read from verse 1 to 5 so that we'll pick the word that the Lord has for us in the name of Jesus. Act 25, I'll read from verse 1. Now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended before Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul. Brethren, he said they informed him against who? Against Paul. And besought him. And desire favor against him, that he will send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. Verse 4. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept in Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly eater. Verse 5. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able to go down with me? And accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. Praise the Lord. Media, can we have it in NIV? Verse 1 down to verse 5. From verse 1, 25 from verse 1. Three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up to Caesarea to Jerusalem where the chief priest and the Jewish leader appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. They requested Festus as a favor to them to have Paul transfer to Jerusalem, for they were preparing an ambush to kill him along the way. Festus answered, Paul is being held in Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Verse 5. Let some of your leaders come with me. And if the man has done anything wrong, 
then can press charges against him there. Praise the living Jesus. We've all read and listened to this word. And I'm sure there are words that are jumping up, jumping out that we'll be wondering, how come? How come? And we should not forget that these are high priests. The high priest, and Paul was once um, uh, one of them. But by the mercy and the favor that he has received from heaven, he has been translated, and he now knows the truth. Brethren, the enemy is not quiet. The enemy is not satisfied. We all knew about the account of Paul from, from the beginning of his journey. Sometimes I'll sit there and I just wonder, this man of God, all he has gone through, all the pains, the trial, the charges, the wrong accusation, everything he has gone through. Why? Why is he going through this? And the more they throw all these stones at him, the more steadfast he becomes. The more of all these charges against him. What, can, can we just quickly talk about it? What, what are those qualities you see in Paul? When he's being accused, when he's being condemned, when the charges come against him, what are those qualities you see him exhibiting? Can we quickly talk about it? What are those things you see Paul demonstrating? Fine, once in a while he might flare up, he might say some things, but there are some qualities, as a good qualities that Paul is always exhibiting, showing, despite all the charges. And why? That is another question. Why? I knew we started, I, I started this Bible um, act from verse chapter 18. Yes, I remember chapter 18. So we've done 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now we're on 24. Every chapter we have treated, what are those good qualities we can see Paul? demonstrating. Please, let's have a good um, discussion on this. It will help our faith. I want to know why. Online, on ground? I don't want to call name more. <laughs> Can we have the mics around? People online, please be part of this great discussion. What are those qualities we have? Yes, sir. Thank you. I think the, the quality is amazing. And then you also said why. And I think that why No, no, is doctor, really, doctor, the no, qualities. I, I, I'll, I'll mention the qualities. Yes, let's it, make sure the qualities first. Yes, you can see one. it was not perturbed. As in everything was shaking around him. But it was not perturbed. It was not moved. And he still stand before kings before the eye and the mighty, and he still speak confidently and boldly. Brethren, he's less listening to all these qualities. So he still speak confidently and boldly. Can about, you go over that again, sir? <laughs> please, don't swallow it. Go over it again, please. It's loaded. So, in, irrespective of all the threats around him, mm. of all the dangers, of all the fact that the next word it says might determine if he will live or die, he was still confident, bold, and speaking with all assurance about his faith before the eye and the mighty, people who, are, who would determine and judge him without being afraid. But uh, the why is what I really, really think is, for me, I think it's really important. The, the scripture that comes to my spirit is that which you have seen, that which you have heard, that which you have Undo with our hand, right? That we cannot but talk about it. And this is personal encounter. And I believe that is why Paul was wrestled and said, ah, I know what I know. The Jesus that appeared to me on the road to Damascus. So everybody is really, really important to get to that point of personal encounter. My Father comes to church. I follow my father to church. My mother have a very respect role in the church. I cannot be disobedient to my mother. I have to come to the church. It's not enough. We must have personal encounter. And this personal encounter is what will keep anyone 
when my parent is not looking, it's guiding me. When my spouse is not there, it's guiding me to speak confidently, boldly, in secret and in the open and say, what I know, I know. What I experience, I experience, irrespective of the storms of life of what threat or risk may be posed at us. And I believe that's really, really, really key. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. I noted the word there, personal encounter with God. That we all must have a personal encounter. So that when the storm of life will come, when there is no one, no shoulder to lean on. Because we will always, and we must, we must, it is a must that we will find ourselves lonely one day in a particular season of life. In a particular season. In a, in when the new chapter is open to our destiny in a particular season, we will find ourselves all alone. And the only thing that will save us, that will help us, is the personal encounter we had or we are having with Christ. Praise the Lord. I love that word. I picked that. Yes, another person. What were those qualities in Paul? Despite all the challenges and every stone that was thrown at him, all the accusation, all the charges lev levied against him. What were, what, let's discuss those qualities and why. Another why. Please, please. Online on ground. Another why. Let's give us another why. Then what are those qualities we've picked from Paul? Can we have the names of those online? Yes, sir. All right. You want to say something, ma? You have to speak. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, the qualities I picked um, from Paul was that um, the fact that his faith never wavered. So his, his, his faith never wavered. He stood his ground, knowing what he believed. God bless you, sir. His faith never wavered. He stood his ground. That scripture, I know whom I believe. He kept at his faith. He did not allow anything to distract him. So, Brogwenga, why? Why did you think he, stood, he was able to stand his ground? Your mic, sir. The total dependence on God that no matter what, this man will not forsake me. Praise the Lord. Like I said, he knew whom he believed in, that God would never forsake him. That no matter the challenges, God will never let him down. Praise the Lord. That's another powerful one. Online? Can we have your contributions, please? We're waiting. What are those qualities we picked from Paul in all of his Accounts that we've studied in Acts, in the book of Acts. What are those qualities? Despite all he, go, he is going through or he went through for Christ. What are those good qualities we could pick? We could lay our hands on. That we can say, yes, I've learned this from Paul and he's helping me. Then the, the following question is why? Why do we think he, he, he was able to exhibit those good qualities? I can see Sister Joanita. I don't want Minister Mike to call your name himself. So I'm calling you on his behalf. I can see Sister Ikechi, please. Let's speak. Let's unmute ourselves and let's have a good discussion, please. Anyone? Anyone online? Praise the Lord. Let's move ahead. He carried God. He carried God. <laughs> he praised God. I like that. He carried God. He know who is in him. Mm, I like that. And why?
Sagbe, me use your mic so that people online can hear Sorry, those he, good quality. He, he was passionate for God. The passion that he had then, when he was, you know, when he was not in the, when he was in the in the flesh in the world, mm -hmm. that passion when he now knew God and knew that what he was doing, he turned that passion to God. So he was really passionate, and he, he was also sacrificial. He could go to any length. I remember, um, when I can't remember the chapter exactly. He said, I've, I've, I, I've used to be content in plenty, mm -hmm. and when it's not plenty. Mm -hmm. So even when it is joyful serving God, and when it's not joyful serving God, and when all through the trial, he was, he was, even though at times, there are times that he, he could flare up, I know we said that, but he was joyful. He knew the cause. Mm. And even because of the encounter, aside from that first encounter, he had other personal encounter. He had seen where he was going. He was, con he was so con convinced. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So another thing I think he has also, he was obedient to God. He was obedient to what he, he was obedient. When God is telling him, you know, this was, although I know there was a time when God, uh, Holy Spirit told him not to go somewhere, that he went and he, he saw, but aside from that, if you look at his account, he was anything that has to do with God, he was ready, he was passionate, he had, in fact, he showed the character of Jesus. Hallelujah. He souls, and he, he really did. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, man. That is just awesome. He, he exhibited the characters of Jesus. He lived a sacrificial life. Then another thing, Stagum said, he was obedient unto God. And the one that really, really caught my attention said he has seen where he's going to. And what does that mean? Paul is a man of purpose. A man of purpose. A man of vision. He was called. He had an encounter. But he didn't stop it there. He didn't limit it there. He took it in his own hand with all zeal, with all seriousness. Because he has seen where he's going to. He has seen the opportunity that others disciples you know, was one, it was one, he said, I came last and I took over. Do you remember that scripture? It was not, they never had a personal encounter with Jesus. It was only through studying. And one, another quality of Paul that he lived a studious life. Paul lived a studious life. He read everything he could lay his hand upon about Jesus. Up to the time of Moses. He was referring to all those things. It was not there, but he lived a studious life. It shows that he's a man of purpose. A man of purpose that knows where he's going to. A man of vision that sits beyond the realm where he is now. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I don't know if we have more. Do we have more contribution? Do we have more contribution? I think someone is online. We can't hear you, sir. Okay, praise the Lord. Is he talking now? Yes, doctor, we can't hear you. Doctor, we can't hear you. Maybe it's on our hand here. We'll try and rectify that. In the church. Hello, sir. Hello, Praise sir. God. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me, ma? We can hear you now, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think one um, significant quality of Paul is that Paul was very enthusiastic. He had, you know, he had passion. Even if you if you look at when he was Saul before he, you know, he gave his life to Christ, he was passionate about what he was doing. He, you know, he he was really he was bold. He took that same passion when he became a Christian and still followed that passion with God as well. And I think it, it tells us something that as Christians, it's not just, it's not just we praying to God and saying, okay, you know, we need to be passionate about God. We need to be bold and, and also be able to, you know, wanting to, you know, walk with God in everything that we do. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir, for that contribution. He was passionate for Christ. Then doctor said something. They said he was bold. It was all out for him. Enthusiasm. He had it all. He had it all. A total package. And it's a lesson, just like what doctor just said, that all we Christians, we need to do and exhibit. He lived that exemplary life for us. Praise the living Jesus. I saw Sister Joanita too. Maybe she's still online. She, Sister Joanita, we can hear you now. Can you speak, please? Now, I was trying to confirm if, if it was uh, Dr. Wong's problem or the system at the church. So, Sister Anita, uh, don't, 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 uh, uh, don't put yourself now. I want to ask you this question. With all, you know I love you so much. With all, yes, ma with all these qualities that we have mentioned, why do you think <coughs> Paul was doing all this? Why do you think he was able to exhibit all these good qualities and character, ma? I think on his own, we don't think he, it could be possible, but I believe God was with him. So there was a purpose, and since um, God deposited that purpose in him, he was, he was with him through the journey, from my own opinion. Bless you. That is a very powerful one. He knew God was with him. And we said when God is I think with... my own suggestion is okay, so Paul was a learned man. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. We can hear you, Ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can hear you. Yeah, I think from my own side of view, Paul was a learned man. You know, knowledge makes you bold. Mm. Though he had the spirit of God in him, he was passionate. And again, he was learned. So he was able to defend himself and do whatever thing that he was doing with clear passion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love that. A learned man. And she said, knowledge make you bold. Knowledge make you bold. It's just like you know the right thing to do and you are doing it. Yeah. And the, and the Bible says the righteous shall be what shall be as bold as the lion. Nothing could intimidate for. Why? Because he had the secret. That's his, and what is the secret? He had the word. He had the knowledge. He knows who he is. He knows where he's coming from and where he's going to. A man of wisdom. A man full of, full of the word of God. There was no shocker for Paul. Nothing. Where I come from, they will tell you, ah, that thing did not just come suddenly. It was, Paul is always prepared for everything. Because of what he was a learned man. God bless you, man. That's awesome. Then I was... I was um, I was laying my emphasis on what Sister Juanita was saying. She said, because God was with him, he knew whom he believed, and he was conscious of it. Brethren, praise the Lord. He was conscious of it that no matter the situation that he find himself, God will always see him through. God will always make a way of escape for him. And did he experience that or not? Even in this chapter that we are studying, we will see how God used even the government, the government, the present government, to see him out of that issue. Every phase of uh, Paul's life, God prepared a way of escape for him. He sent helpers. You remember his... Nephew, do you remember his nephew in chapter in one of those chapters that was able to hear what they were planning and came to tell him? He sent help us within and without for Paul. So wherever we find ourselves, wherever Paul found himself, there was always helper. God is always sending him helper. Praise the living Jesus. I really celebrate God for the life of every one of us. I celebrate God in our lives. I thank God for the knowledge of Christ in us. And I see us growing more and more in Christ in the name of Jesus. All those beautiful qualities we said about Paul and why. Brethren, this should be our lifestyle. Paul faced so many challenges. So many things will always come up. But what the personally I've, I, I learned and I'm taking in this lesson is, is always peaceful. 
Paul is always peaceful. It takes a man that is peaceful to be able to speak to, the, to his enemy. When Paul speaks, there's always a grace that comes alive. If you are not peaceful, he has that inner peace. It's called, in another word, inner strength. It's, it's part of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It shows he carried the Holy Spirit. Let me use Sister Baby's word. He has the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he, he kept exhibiting each and every of the gifts of the Spirit. Paul was peaceful. Peaceful. And he was able to exhibit it. Nothing came shocking to him. Nothing came suddenly. We always have the word to say. That means he is always prepared. A prepared man, a prepared woman will have what to say on the days of battle. The Bible speaks, he said, when your strength is little, it shows you are not prepared. I, I, I can't remember how that scripture was. He said, in the days of battle, when your strength is little, it shows how, it, it should be the Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. Your strength remember. is small. Uh -huh, please help me with your that. Your strength is small. Mm-hmm. If you fell in the time of adversity, mm -hmm. your strength is small. God bless you, ma. God bless you, sir. Paul never failed. It shows how prepared. And when we talk about strength for the days of battle, you don't just enter a battle suddenly. And remember, the battles of life come suddenly. But the preparation of the heart, the preparation of the mind, of your spirit, soul, and body, because of those qualities in him, and I see God helping us in the name of Jesus. I said something earlier on. I said, Paul is a man of purpose. He knew his calling and he knew his purpose in life. And what is the greatest purpose? Why? When we talk about purpose, what does it mean? Please, can we discuss that too? When we talk about purpose, I said Paul is a man of purpose. When we talk about purpose, let's discuss this too. What does it mean? A man of purpose, a woman of purpose. What is the meaning of that word? God bless you, man. God's calling. God bless you. That is, that, is a, that is a good one. The calling of God upon one's life. A man of purpose. Yes, another word. Please let's be free in the presence of God. There is fullness of joy. God's calling. There's a calling of God upon Paul, and we knew the encounter he had to get in there. We knew what God had to take him through, and I'm sure he can never forget that encounter. No matter what, he can never forget that encounter. So now, the question is, do you have a purpose for living? Do I have a purpose for living? There is an encounter you've had with Christ, that I have had with Christ. That come rain, come sunshine will make me to keep standing. Doctor said something and I wrote it down. He said, personal encounter with God. That will keep us in the days of adversity. Personal encounter with Christ. So now what is your purpose? What is my purpose? Now let's discuss the purpose of Paul. What was his purpose? Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. He did not meet Christ physically, but he had the revelation of Christ and you know everything was is in the Bible, Timothy, all those letters to Timothy, letter to Thessalonica, all those you know scriptures. He wrote he had a God gave him a very deep revelation. So it was about even some things that the apostles did not that way which Jesus did not really understand. He had the privilege, God would I, I, Probably because of the, his qualities that he had, that he was a passionate person. He had deep understanding he, of the word. Yes. Then he, he had the revelation of the word too. Yes. Not just the, the understanding, but he had the revelation. Yes. Paul had a deep revelation of the word. And one of his purpose is just like what Sagbebi just said, is to preach the word. 
to take the word all around. I remember, I think it was in chapter 20, that it, it read while others were on the ship. It read. It read, and we were like, why was Paul trekking while he asked them to take the ship? In case those, maybe one of, I remember when we were discussing it, that maybe he, 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 was, he knew it was going to come across some people that might not hear the gospel again. So he decided to take, to trek while he sent them over the ship. He was a man of purpose and was ready to die for his purpose. Paul was ready to lay down his life for, for his purpose, the purpose of God for his life. I think I saw something online. Somebody was commenting. Okay, praise the living Jesus. Now, when we talk about purpose, let's quickly go into the scripture and see what purpose means. So that you know, and I will know, am I living a purposeful life? Or am I living for myself? Am I living for selfish gain? And why am I created? What is the reason why God created me? And I want to use it this, in this way. Why has God given you this life? Why has he handed this life to you? And how are you using it? How am I using it? Paul used and lived his life for Christ. And is an example for us. When we talk about purpose, this declares who we are and why we are existing. Purpose has to do with who we are. It's a declaration of who we are and the reason why we are existing. It captures the art of why am I here on this earth? Am I here just to eat, sleep, drink, and walk? Why are we here on this earth? Why are we occupying this space? Praise the Lord. Purpose defines our life. We all can define, if I ask us to define Paul's life, we all will have a different definition for his life based on the kind of life he lived. Purpose defined one's life. And brethren, purpose is not according to our own terms. It is not according to what we want. It has to do with the times of heaven and what heaven wants. It, our purpose is, should be all about God. Everything we do in life should be all about God. And the final one I have here is, purpose is an anchor of our life. Purpose is the anchor of our life. Our life depends on our purpose. The outcome of our destiny relies so much on our purpose. And I pray that none of us will miss the purpose of evil for us in the name of Jesus. Paul did not miss it. And we all can testify to that. He got to a point, he said, if he wants to go, he can go. But for your sake, I will stay. He said, I have run the race. He ran his race. Are you running your race? Or you are running somebody else's race? Are you living a purposeful life? Am I living a purposeful life? This is the life Paul lived. And we all could testify of what the encounter he had with God and the testimony thereafter. Our prayer is this, that none of us will miss the purpose of God for our lives and destiny in the name of Jesus. Brethren, God has called us into a glorious destiny. He has shaped and prepared us for a unique purpose. We are all different. Each of the apostles had different personalities and character. And they carry different grace. But every one of them were, was to work together for the gl gl glory of the kingdom. We are called into a destiny that will bring glory to God. Praise the Lord. I want to take that again. We are called into a destiny that will bring glory back to God. So is what you are doing now giving glory back to God? Is what I'm doing now giving glory back to God? 
And then another thing, we are called into a destiny of sharing grace. Sharing the grace of God upon our life with other people. That is the life God has called us into. Praise the living Jesus. Can we have Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 19 on the screen? So that we know there is a purpose for our life. There is a purpose for each destiny that God has created. Jeremiah 32 and verse 19. Great are your purpose and mighty are your deeds. Did you hear that? Great are your purpose for every life God has created. He, created. he has created us for great purpose. He said, mighty are your deeds. When we talk about deeds, is that not the work of God's hands? And who are we? We are the work of his hands. He said, your eyes are open to the ways of all my kind. You reward each person according to their conduct and as their deeds desire. We are the work of his hand. And you reward those according to their conduct. Their conduct has to do with their purpose. So there is a way you will package yourself. You will do things because of the purpose of God for your life. And it says, as their deeds deserve. As their deeds deserve. That is their work, their purpose. He said, he reward. So our reward has to do with our purpose. Yes, ma'am. Your mic, ma'am. I just want to ask a question. Um, I know we're talking about purpose, but for me, it's looking like, it's looking generic. So my question is, is it purpose like, for instance, the scripture said uh, that he all should go into the world and preach. That would be general language. Everybody, so everybody was in that language. Let's talk about the gospel. So could we say that that's the purpose of God for our life? Or okay, the purpose of God for our life, of course, for us to make it to heaven. Or is it that it's, it's specific to each individual? Okay, before I, w I want others to contribute before I answer. Stagwemi is asking us that, is it a general purpose? Is that what you're saying? Or there is a specific purpose for each and every one of us? So please, I'm ha we are throwing the question open to everyone. Our purpose, what, is it for a general cause? Should we all be doing the same thing towards the same end? I don't want to answer it. <laughs> or... There are individual for uh, things that has to do with individuality. Praise the Lord. Can we quick? Can we have a discussion on that? Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it, it's a bit of both, um, really. Um, so that there is all, we have general grace, the general purpose where, you know, God has called us, you know, to evangelize. And there's also a specific or a special thing that God has called you as an individual. And, and you need to obviously understand exactly what your calling is. So a good example could be in this case that, you know, the principle of if you, you know, if you, whatever you sow, you reap, whatever, you know, a non-Christian might also adopt that principle and we still get the blessing. But as a Christian, we have a special grace. We have that special thing that is different from an unbeliever that God has given us. So again, if you look at that purpose, you need to discover what is your purpose that God is specifically telling you beyond the general purpose as a Christian. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, you do. yes it does, sir. It does, sir. Okay. Did you get yeah. that one? Doctor said there is a specific purpose for individual and there is a general purpose. I'm not going to contribute now. I want other people to contribute. So Praise more the, contribution, please. Praise yes, the Lord. sir. Hallelujah. Um, well, talking about purpose, just like uh, Sister Gwemi contributed on that. Um, yeah, I think uh, just like uh, First Corinthians 12 has said, uh, when we equate uh, as a mathematician, when you equate purpose to the spirit, um, you know, when we say purpose, uh, we are, we are in the spirit, we are talking about the spirit of God. And um, First Corinthians 12 uh, says uh, about the spiritual gift. Verse 4, it says there are diverse, diversities uh, of gift. They're the same spirit. 
And there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God. But the, the latter part uh, is the interesting one. He said, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given word of wisdom, and if we carry on. So when we talk about purpose, we, we, we also know that, that just like doctor has contributed, there, is, there should be one purpose, which is uh, to drive at God, that this is the reason why I'm doing this, is to God. And just like the body as well, we know we have a hand, we have head, we have leg, we have this, we have that. They have different function, but all of them work for one person, which is the, the entire uh, uh, um, uh, carrier of the body. And that's the same way we are in, in Christ. And that's why we call ourselves a body of Christ. So if I'm doing this in the house of God, and you are doing that, and you are doing this, it means that we are all doing it together as one to achieve one purpose, which is to fulfill the mandate of God. And um, um, I've heard this before, and someone said, oh, I don't have the grace of giving. Oh, I don't have the grace of forgiving. Those are all, I don't, I, I see them as uh, irrational. Because uh, as Christians, I should not say I don't have the spirit of forgiveness. What is Christ? Forgiveness. I don't have the spirit of love. What is Christ? Love. So if you don't have all those, you are not working towards that purpose. So there should be, oh, uh, me, I don't have the spirit of forgiveness. When you are, nah, then you should, you should uh, still ask for God to come into your life because that is, yeah, that is the purpose. I think that is the only purpose because unless we start adding uh, human purpose, which is uh, I want to make money. Uh, I want to make those are just human. But when we talk about purpose in, the, in, in Christendom, there's only one, which is towards God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir, for this contribution. Yes, more online, on ground? More contributions? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We've all said the, the right things and the good things. We've all said the facts. There are individual purpose because we are created differently. I read something. I said, we are created to bring, to share the grace. There is a grace I, I have. There is a grace you have. There is a grace everybody has. Praise the Lord. We are different in our personality. And he created us, he fashioned us that way. Just like what Pastor um, Doctor said, specifically, there are things someone can do that I cannot do. There are things I can exhibit. When I see some, when I see people, I come in, 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 in contact with people. I celebrate God in their life because the grace God has given unto them, I don't have it, and I cannot even have it. I am I fashioned in that way. That is why we don't convert in this kingdom. Praise the living Jesus. So we are all created differently. But for what purpose are we all created? All should be towards God. All our purpose should be to glorify God. To return all the praise, all the glory back to God. Now, let's come to spirituality. What is our purpose as Christians? To evangelize. To minister to Christ. I know people that cannot go out to evangelize. They are shy. But when it comes to evangelism on their knee, they can pray the kingdom down. They are fulfilling their whole purpose. Why some, when they get out there to do crusade, the whole world will know that this is a man of purpose. So we all have to understand our purpose on a personal level with Christ. That is why we have to go back to the world. Who am I? What have you created me for? Why am I here? We have to, it's, it's, it's going to be a personal discovery of oneself. And it's going to, it has to do with another thing, personal reorientation of oneself. When you discover yourself, then you'll be able to pilot your life towards that. All we need to do is to go back to the manual 
of our life. And what is the manual of our life? The word. We are dis to discover who we are. I have seen a lot of people that did not, they, they've not, they, they could not even, while in university, they couldn't discover their own purpose. A lot even went into wrong courses that was not. When you talk about, when we also talk about purpose, you know we, can, we, are, we, we combine purpose and passion. Your passion will also define your purpose. What are you passionate about? Someone said it. Paul was passionate for Christ. And he knew he had that passion to when he was on the other side. Fire for Christ. He brought the same fire back to Christ. So we already know his passion. It's like, a, it's like fire in his bone. It's like Paul is someone that we act to things that are not, that are not, are not right. He, when he was on the other side, he thought he was doing the right thing. But when he had that divine encounter, which all of us must have, if you want to live a purposeful life, you must have a divine encounter. When he had that divine encounter with Christ on the way to Damascus, he, he was able to, as in, his orientation changed about his purpose. And we all need to go through that. We must have a divine encounter with God. Then it will bring about that passion. We'll be able to align our passion towards our purpose. We cannot separate passion and purpose. I love singing. That is my passion. Is it my purpose? Praise the Lord. And if it's my passion, what will I do? God bless you, sir. And if I want to do it better, what will I do again? I will prove myself on it. God bless you. So that is the way to discover one's passion and one's purpose. You look inwardly. Who am I? This is me. I remember a particular time in my life when I was telling God, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. But which one are you saying? We should not deceive ourselves. We have to lay it bare before him. We, all, we are all multi, multi tax um, individual. We can do so many things. But what is your passion? Where is your core strength? We know brought own the word of God. So we need to discover our passion, where our heart is. I said, God, I can do this. This is me. This is me. This is my certificate. This is this one. I was just, and I was just praying. And God said, that is what I want from you. And since I started running out of that passion, I know what it has done for me. Our passion defined our purpose. And our purpose defined our destiny. And at the long run, it's going to, it must bring glory back to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. What are we doing today? We are just looking at all Paul has gone through, every, every good character he exhibited, and the reason why. And we have said it because of his personal encounter and because of his purpose. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's and work, created in Christ Jesus, to do what? Good work which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are all God's handy work. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Can we go have it in King James Version? In advance. So he has predestined us. He has already prepared it. The discovery now is our responsibility. For we are his and workmanship, created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So he has created us unto good works, and he has ordained them. So to fulfill life, we must walk in them. To fulfill destiny, we must walk in them, discovering our purpose and walk within them. And just like all we have, we've all said, it must return the glory back to God. Praise the living Jesus. So if you want to discover purpose, 
We must live a studious life. I will leave my emphasis on that. We need to go back to the world to discover who we are. Then another thing we, can, we need to do to discover purpose, we have to pray. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. You cannot have passion for something if there is no inner strength to deliver it. Before you know it, you feel so exhausted. Let's imagine Paul doing all this in the harm of flesh. How, do we think he would have lasted all to that point? He couldn't do it by the harm of flesh. Because even in the first place, flesh and blood did not reveal his destiny to him. It took an encounter for him to understand and know who he is. So with prayer, from the altar of prayer, we get strength to keep running our purpose. We have discovered ourselves fine, but we must not leave it there. We take it to another level. We will keep praying about it. And the more we pray about it, God will checkmate us. We'll know there are things we need to drop. There are things we need to add. There are connections you need to make. There are relationships that must come in for you to get to the next. I said something, now Minister Mike said it. I have to develop it. I cannot develop my passion and my purpose alone. I need people around me. So many discoveries that we need to go into. And I see God helping us in the name of Jesus. So for us to deliver on our purpose, we need prayer. So that we will not get tired. We will not be weary. We won't get to a point and give up. No matter how the challenges that came to us, Paul, he was relaxed. He knew where he's going to. And he's a man of prayer. Even in the prison. You know how we prayed. And now he was singing unto God. I see God and grace each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. We just take one more because of our time. Let's go back to that Act chapter 25, verse 3. If there are questions on that, please let us know so that we'll, we'll treat it. More clarity. But I'm very sure with all the contribution from everyone, personally, I've been blessed. And the Lord will continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. Act 25, verse 3 says, and desire favored against him. We treated that favor. We did, treated that in chapter 24. We will go into that. That he will send for him to Jerusalem. The priests were designed the favor that Felix will bring. Sent Paul back to them in Jerusalem. Why? The last statement. Laying weight in the way to kill him. Laying weight in the way to kill him. Can you imagine a man of purpose? A man of purpose working for the Lord. And the enemy is planning on laying way to kill him. Say laying weight in the way to kill him. Can we have it in NIV? So we have the understanding of that laying weight. They requested Festus, sorry, Festus, not Felix as a favor to them to have Paul transfer to Jerusalem. For they were preparing. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. It is loaded though. Say they were preparing and what? Ambush to kill him along the way. My darling, an ambush. Now listen. An ambush is the plan of the wicked. An organized, or, I said organized, plan of the wicked to enslave, to trap, to kill. Praise the Lord. The first, the king just said, lay wait. Said they prepare it to lay wait and ambush. We have so many scriptures on this in the Bible. But I want us to look at it from this angle this evening. See Paul on a mission. A man on an assignment. Was it a personal assignment? A divine assignment. 
the purpose of God for his life, it was fulfilled. But still, the enemy was preparing an ambush to kill him along the way. So are we exempted? Are we exempted? Even when you are running a good course, be prepared for an ambush. When I am running, you are running a good course. Be prepared for an ambush. Because the enemy will never keep quiet. Someone was asking, having a discussion with me yesterday. And she was like, Pastor Honor, why is it that the higher we go in life, the more trouble we get? I was like, explain yourself. She said, when you pray to God to promote you, and when you get into that promotion, another battle. And I was like, that is life for you. That is why we must not keep silent over our life and over our destiny. For every promotion comes temptation. For every promotion, for every advancement comes the battle from the kingdom of hell. Because if you receive it without paying a price for it, you will not appreciate it. Praise the Lord. A lot have missed and they've lost glorious opportunity because they were not prepared for the battle that comes with the promotion. That's why you see someone, an executive director that has been promoted and he was relaxed. Yes, I've gotten it. And all they did to set for him is a secretary as a girlfriend. He was not sensitive. For every promotion in life, there will always be a corresponding battle. The higher we go, the higher the battle. The higher we move forward, the higher the battle. See Paul in this scripture. All he was doing was just for a good, the good cause of ministering the word. Taking the world to every corner. And they were preparing an ambush for him. There is no escape for all of us. If we are not prepared. But our escape is in who? In God. So we need to be ready. We need to be prepared for battles. We cannot but fight them. When we just give our lives, those small, small battles will come. We're coming. If we are all sincere, the higher we go, the higher the battle. And we, we all fight different battles. So if, especially if you're on a good course, you must be ready for battle. And I, I don't want to call it battle now. I'm going to call it the test of faith. The faith that got you that testimony will be tested. The faith that got me that testimony will surely be tested. But we have to be prepared for it. And I see God engracing us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because of our time, I know we're going to have questions. We will stop here. I will continue from here next week. I see God helping us. But tonight, I just want us to know one thing before we, we do the next thing. Our God is ever present with us. No matter the level, no matter the situation we find ourselves. He said he will make a way of escape. Even for Brother Paul, in this chapter, God made a way of escape for him. God will do everything in his power to protect a man and a woman of purpose. No matter the prevailing challenge, no matter the prevailing circumstances. As long as we are men and women of purpose, no matter the plan, the lay weight of the enemy, the ambush they are preparing, God will do all to protect his own. And I see God protecting each and every one of us from every ambushment of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Brethren, let's begin to appreciate God for the word he has sent to us again tonight. Let's begin to give him all the glory. Let's appreciate it because I know he has blessed me tonight. He has blessed you. Let's thank him. Thank you for the word he has spoken unto you. Is it about purpose? To discover and to know what you need to do. And to know that the end of every man's purpose is to give glory to God. Lord, we exalt on you. We have not come in vain. We have come and we are returning loaded tonight. You have spoken to our spirit. Even more than we desire, more than we prepared, you have done it your way. 
You have revealed yourself to us. You have shown us qualities that we need to exhibit as your children. Lord, we appreciate you. We exalt your name. All we ask, oh God, Father, in the, in the midst of every challenge, oh God, Lord, prove yourself. Lord, prove yourself, oh Lord. Let the prevailing power in the blood of Jesus continue to prevail for each and every one of us. And we vow to give you all the praise. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time for our offering. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what we have had today. We give you all the praise, Lord, even as we are about to give the, uh, our Titan offering. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you bless our Titan offering, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we also ask for the grace to be the doer of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Abraham. Abraham and Abraham. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed all the time. Abraham, blessing the man. Abraham, blessing the man. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. Oh, I am blessed. I am blessed. In the morning, I am blessed. All the time. Abraham, blessings are mine. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. If you are and grace the account, church account details. You can send in our offering tonight on online, on ground. And just as our sister has prayed, the Lord will answer us in the name of Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. I'm sure we know that their mommy are, yes, spiritually, they are doing great, they are doing fine. They need time out with God, and they, it is very, very mandatory. They send their love, and we pray that wherever they are, that the hand of Jehovah will continue to be upon them for greatness in the name of Jesus. They left in peace, they return in peace in the name of Jesus. And let's do not let us forget Friday. We'll be having our evening prayer, 8 to 8 30. Please do all to join us online. And as you do so, we'll pray. We have a brief word of exhortation. I will go back to pray. We worship. And Daddy bless us, and it's always a wonderful weekend after those prayers. Join us, and the Lord will continue to be with us in Jesus' name. And he said something. He said we should encourage each other, that we should keep calling, checking up on ourselves. And I'm relating the message, and I'll tell him I did. So please. <laughs> okay, I'll call you, sir. So please, call someone this week. And as you do so, the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Online or ground. Can we be on our feet and let's share the grace together as a family, shall we? God, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I am an overcomer. Because Jesus Christ, who is in me, is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for coming. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name.